So when people ask me, what is it I do, I often perk up and say, I build robots. And then, of course, the inevitable question comes, oh, that's interesting. What do they do? And I've got to go, uh, not much, really. You know, it's hard to explain to people what this robotics thing is about. A lot of people don't get it. People used to ask the same question about computers. You know, back when people were first pushing computers forward, they said, someday everybody's going to have one of these in our house. And people would say, why? What do I want with a computer? They didn't get it. They didn't know where it was going. So one thing that we often hear is that we say, robotics today is like computers were in the 70s. You know, we say, is that really true? You know, is, uh, is that a comparative? And so I sat down and I took a look at the technology adoption life cycle of computers and that of robotics. And there's actually quite a few correlations between the two. And that'll help us draw a roadmap of where we need to go in robotics by looking at where we've been in computers and uh, how that evolution happened. So let's take a look at some of those correlations. Industrial, that's both electronics and robot, or sorry, computers and robotics started industrial. It's because it's a very expensive technology, and so you need to be in an area where you can have high returns in order to get uh, your costs back out of it. The first generation of computers were in the 1940s. They were used in the military for encryption and decryption. They were used in the Navy. Um, they used uh, aircraft manufacturers to calculate project, uh, trajectories. The federal government used it in the U.S. Census Bureau and the accounting divisions. So again, places where you had to do a lot of calculation, crunch a lot of data, basically the industrial equipment when it comes to data. For robotics, the first arms, uh, let's see, arms came out in the 1960s and 70s. The first uh, robotic arm was shipped to GM and used the stack high, uh, hot die cast metal. They used the manufacturing plants, and um, that's basically the equivalent of the mainframe when it comes to computers. So defining factors at this market stage are, like I said, it's a very expensive technology to begin with, and so you need to use it in a place where you get really high yield returns out of it. It's only the biggest of boys to play. After that, you have big to small business. The defining factors in this stage are that the costs start to drop to where big businesses can get out of the game and eventually it trickles down to small businesses. For computers, the realm of big business was in the 50s, and computers made it to small business in the mid-60s. Uh, for robotics, it's harder to pin down. As I did my research, basically, I can only narrow it down to the late uh, 1990s, and some might even argue it's as early as the, the early 2000s was the first time robotics made it into uh, big business. We really haven't seen much for small business yet when it comes to robotics. Robotics, uh, big business, again, would be the government. We use it in the military. We use it in research. Uh, you guys are familiar with all those types of robotics. Um, they use it in security, big business, the Sentinels. Uh, remote inspection, things like pipelines, oil and water, power lines, um, service robotics, cleaning, cutting grass, things of, the, of that nature. So defining factors in this market stage are that the price has dropped low enough to somewhere between $100,000 to $1 million, that's for big business. When it gets down to small business, you're, looking, you're talking about the $20,000 range, and that's when computers start to uh, proliferate now through small business. The systems are still built top to bottom by one place. Um, they probably come with service contracts. The technology is still new and it's still pretty complex and somebody needs to manage it. So after that is a, what I would call a small, low-cost system. So in 1976, the Apple I came out, so did the Commodore PET. And currently, in the past few years, we've started to see humanoids, complex robotics of humanoids come out of the market. And this is probably your best comparison for the argument that says that computer robotics is now like computers was in the 1970s. Things that are similar between these two stages is that the cost is now down around $1,000, give or take, and so now geeks and education can start getting into it. Technology really doesn't do very much. Back in the 1970s, uh, people played a bit in education and, and hobbies, but it really didn't do much. And again, people said, well, what would I need a computer for? Technology really hasn't shown up for what its usefulness is yet. Same thing for robotics at this point. We see it in a lot of education and hobbyists. The robots are basically for entertainment. It's for people to play around with other technologies people that are seeing a future of it, but it's not going to do anything for you yet. You know, every time we go to a show and we're, just, we're showing these robots off in the booth, people always walk up and say, what can it do for me? And that's basically the answer. It entertains you if, you, if you enjoy that sort of thing. So the next two stages I'm going to talk about at the same time because they basically go hand in hand. It would be modularization and standards. It's sort of a chicken and egg scenario. You don't really know which ones come first sometimes. Um, one leads the other and vice versa. For computers, in the late 80s and early 90s, you started seeing store shelves full of components. You started seeing modularization happen. Uh, in 81, MS-DOS came out, evolved in the Windows. You saw other OSs coming out under the scenes. In robotics, we're now past our timeline. There are no standards in robotics. We've got people pushing different standards, but there are none that have really taken over the market. 
any modularization that you're seeing happen is really behind the scenes from business to business. It's not on the store shelves yet. Uh, we haven't gotten there. So we're starting to see where computers have gone and where robotics might be going next if we were to do a comparison between the two and feel like they, they match. So standards, um, you know, defining factors at stages that the standards are evolving. You've got in computers, you have connections, standard connections between the, uh, the hard drives and the, and the motherboards, let's say. Standard connections for your peripheral devices, standard connections for things like audio and video parts, PCI slots, memory slots, things like that we haven't seen in robotics yet, and hopefully we, we will soon. The last stage we see in robotics is um, computers is software concentration. Again, we're not there in, in robotics yet. Robotics is still a lot of hardware problem solving. Software took off in the 90s and really exploded in the 2000s for computers. And with the advent of the internet, we saw even more software explosion. Defining, micro, uh, defining factors in this market stage are is that technology advancement largely becomes a software issue. The hardware's mature, it'll improve, but it's really not changing anymore. Uh, other things are that uh, major advancements can start coming out of things like basements and dorm rooms, as you've seen with uh, computers in the internet age. And software can be stacked in layers. And that's one reason that the technology begins to accelerate, is that people are now standing on each other's shoulders stacking the software. And it's not people doing it in-house by themselves, top to bottom anymore. So if you take a look at it, we are here. We're somewhere in the middle. So we can tell that we've gotten about halfway there, and we've got three stages left modularization, uh, standards, and concentration on software.